$4,995. Okay, welcome back to second half action. The nice will kick off and we take it on the 10 yard line, racing to the far side. Now putting on the skids and leading tacklers and running out of room to run is the return man at time, Malachi Hampton for the Squim Wolves. Squim Wolves will start things off here in the second half, deep in their own territory at about the 10 yard line. This is a great, great position to be in for Bremerton. Get him a three and out, get good field position. It's only a 7 6 game. We got the game of the week so far. We literally got some scores really fast here. Uh, North Mason just lost to uh, Bainbridge 42 to 7. And Pornaz is getting killed by North Kitsap 35 to 6. 35 to 6. And we're about to start the second half. All right, so we got first down and a 10 for the Squim Wolves. Well, we have a well, we have a flag on the field at the 18. I think a personal foul. Uh, hang on here. Yeah, we got a personal foul, and the coach has a right to know what number is that person, and that's what he's asking. What? Give me a number. I need a number. You got to have a number on the personal foul, and that's what's wrong. It's trying to explain to him. The white one is, um, excuse me, the white hat. And so what we got here? Uh, Rob Shager, if you let us know, the, the red hat. Yeah, Rob, that Ron, Rob. Sorry, Rob. Well, we know he, we, he likes his name announced. I know, yeah. I, know. I can't press that. <laughs> here we go. This is what we got, Rob. Dead foul. That's first from like conduct. First possession. On. Wow, what an absolute disaster. He's been kicked out. He's been literally kicked out. And that's going to go against Squim. I just don't know who. Oh, boy. So Malachi Hampton, the slot receiver, the 5'8", 165 down junior, has been exited from this football game. Yes, he's been very vital vital in this game. That's a big loss. He was giving somebody a what four down there. And so we got first down on their, on their own five. Oh, that's a big loss. All right, so now they're gonna tell a timeout. And then this is crucial for the squim wolves. They, they're deep in their own territory. And they just got Malachi Hampton, one of their talented uh, wide receivers kicked out of this football game in a very viable part of this offense. Remember that Squim doesn't have a passing attack, and when they do have a passing attack, Ham Hampton is the best wide receiver they have. Now he's out. He's out. And well, it, he's, he caught the only touchdown pass in this football game for the only score for the Squim Wolves in this football game. Hampton's not very happy. He's not, I got my binoculars on him. He's not very happy. You can see him down there. Talking to the officials. He's a couple of Bremerton. Not having a great time on the sideline now. Having to watch this. I'm surprised he doesn't have to go to the locker room. I, I, I don't know the rules about well, all that. They changed the rules. Uh, you stay with the team unless you're totally obnoxious and you send home. But they changed that about a couple of years ago. So, the, so, so Amber, the AD, has to come up. Once again, like last week, the AD, Amber, it's just happening right now, and the head coach, uh, and they from both coaches, they already met in the middle of the field to discuss the matter. Any unsportsman like Connor or any, any player ejected, they all have to meet in the middle of the field, which they already did, they already, did already. And now, Amber, both coaches are talking to the players about the sportsmanship conduct rule. And this is what happened last week. And Bremerton uh, lost her composure last week Ontario to Kelso at 7-0, and then Kelso put it on on them. And that's what's happening right now. And they're also probably talking about the, uh, the, the no response to what right. they they did this to you. Don't go back and do the gym. Don't get for don't look for redemption. Don't look for any kind of payback. You just go out there and play Bremerton tonight's football. And I'm pretty sure that Coach T is reminding them what happened last week. What they talked about all week, that you got to control your composure. And it's so tough at this age. <laughs> K-Mac, you were a spark plug when you played. <laughs> oh, man. You don't mess with K-Mac, Daddy. <laughs> okay, well, Squim Wolves get the first down. First down and very, very long. The five-yard line. Down to five. Their first possession of the second half. The turn can take the snap and met in the backfield and dropped. Is the ball carrier. And let's see who that was. That was the ball carrier was uh, 
<laughs> was uh, Liam Wicker. He was dropped in the backfield by one of the big bodies for the Bremerton Knights defense. Yeah, they can pin him down here and capitalize what's just been happening. That, that will show maturity from Bremerton from what happened last week. And we got now, we got a flag. It's getting chippy now. It's getting chippy. And on the Well, it's going to be. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Here comes the flag. Where did they pick it up? So once again, the clock problem. And Rob is looking at the clock. It's 11.35. They want 11.55. <laughs> Can't be them. We said one. Yeah, it's 11.45. They just put the 10 more seconds on the clock. That's why they'll stop, on the, stop on, the, on the game. So it's now second, second and 12 at their own five-yard line. We're saying now in 12 for Squim. Buried back deep in their own territory and trying to get it out to the edge. Defense for the Knights are waiting for him and he has dropped in his tracks and uh, probably barely get back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, uh, Elijah Harris wanted to burn the Knights there to make the stop. I can't tell you how uh, important this phase of the game is. They can give him a three and out, get killed field position, and eventually take the lead for Bremerton if they want to win this ball game. This is a big down, third down and 11. So here we go. Big third down for the Squim Wolves. Third down is 11, as Joe just mentioned. The snap and back to pass to Smanick. He's going to look out to the flat on the left and is just and is going to fall well short. That was an intended receiver, Ethan uh, Melnick. And uh, it flutters to the unofficial surface here at Burbington Memorial Stadium. Brings up fourth down. The Burbington Knights can get the football back in great field position. And... Uh, even better if they get a return back on this kick is uh, Enoch Cater is going to be drifting back for the Bremerton Knights nice to return this punt. So I was looking at the uh, white hat Rob. He said the ball was tipped. That's why the ball didn't get to him. It was actually tipped by the player. So here we go. Enoch Taylor. And. Enoch standing back in his 34 yard line. What a Here's a snap. Here's a kick. Nice end over in kick. It's really short, however. Gonna take a bounce from Tyke Taylor. Shakes and bakes at the 33 and then drops at the 32. There to make the stop for the Squim Wolves was uh, Jamison Gray, the 6'4, 190 pound senior defender for the Squim Wolves. And uh, Enoch Taylor, but anyway, that was a, a very risky play by Enoch Taylor as he uh, took that with uh, two defenders uh, coming right down in his mouth. That Taylor guy, is a, what an athlete. Y'all see him in the basketball court. <laughs> uh, hey, this is a golden opportunity. Here we go, first and 10 at the Squim 32 yard line, 10 46, third quarter. And uh, shotgun formation, here we go, came out. So on the ninth, straight field position on the Squim 32. Shotgun formation, and here's a direct snap to uh, Jara. Goes right up to right hash mark and is finally stopped at the 26 yard line after about a five yard pickup. Nice job by Kenneth Ajara for the Bremerton Knights. The ball carried that time for the Bremerton Knights. So we got a penalty. It's holding against Bremerton. That's big. That's big. And uh, especially with the Knights have great field position yes. after his first down and, yes. and it's uh, pushing yourself back. Yes. And this thing is, I think the flag's going to go against number 60 for the Bremerton Knights, Brody Wilcoxon, the 6'1", 230-pound offensive lineman, uh, whistled for that penalty. And uh, so a, a, a player kind of grabbed him by the shoulder pads and go, hey, man, shake it off. Let's go. This, uh, that's a big 10-yard penalty against the Bremerton Knights. They so say first down and 20. Now for the Knights, now back at their own 42. Oh, gosh. It's, uh, it's a first and 20 now, 42-yard line. <laughs> Here we go. First pushes him back. The Rob Shocker will wind the arm. The clock will start. 10.31 to go here in the second quarter. Floods up over. The ball is loose again. About the Bremerton Knights. It's just her surface, and Addison jumps on it for Bremerton. Well, it's one thing to Bremerton Knights. They've, they've comped up this football a number of times. Not really hit by a defender fumble, just unable to hand on the football, but able to jump on it, and that's one big key thing is Squim's not jumped on one of those loose football yet. So the player is going on motion, and the ball is high, and hits the motion player in the hip. That's what happened. <laughs> so, oops. 
This guy can move. Second down and long. Second down and 22. Doing just what Squim did on their last offensive possession, going the wrong way. <coughs> Here's a handoff right up the middle, and it's Marquise Allen. Glides up to the near hash mark to the 45. Bonnie stopped there by Jericho Jumist, but not before he picks up good yardage on the play. That was uh, Marquise Allen, the ball carrier that time. Once again, hope we get some positive yards for maybe for possible field goal, but I don't think Coach T is all about that field goal right now. 12 yard pickup by the Bremer tonight. Third down and 13. Four in the Knights now. They just changed the play. They just changed the play. They saw something. I wouldn't doubt that play when they had a touchdown. It's next. That reverse. You know, they clap for the football as the quarterback for the Bermuda Knights. The jar is going to hand off to Pinatusi. He's going to pick his way to the near side. No, that again, it's Isaiah Addison picks his way through the near sidelines. Ushered out of bounds there. Shy of a first down at the 31. Be fourth down now and um, about eight. And I, think I would go for two. Again, it's in that tweener zone. Too, it's a kid, too, too far to kick and too short to punt. And to the Knights to see if they can't pick up a first down. Now, it is a challenge. It was fourth down and 11 for the Bremerton Knights. Boy, there's a coach on the far sideline for the for the uh, Squim Wolves just going bananas on the far sideline. trying To so the Knights, uh, Najar, the quarterback, going to keep it himself. He's going to try to cut up and know where to go. Making the stop was Braden White, the six-foot, 190-pound senior, Braden White, Read that place, nipped it out, and stopped Najara for a loss on the play, and the Knights will turn the football over on downs. And so Squim will get the football back with 8.55 to go. I got some news for you here. Okay. Other than South Kitsap getting killed. North Mesa came from behind to win? No. No, 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 no. South Kitsap lost 32 to 14. Oh. Couldn't occur. But I got some bigger news after this play. Bigger news. We won the lotto. There's a pitch out to the far side. Picking his way on the far hash mark. And funny, Bulldog down is the ball carrier. The big news is that Hampton is back, number 18. <laughs> uh, somehow this scribble, I was just been told. By our boys from our north here, who's with us on the press box, good old KONP News Radio. He just told me the Hampton's back, but I don't see him on the I'm looking at my binoculars, and we'll see if I can find him. Liam Wicker was the ball carrier that last offensive possession, picked up four yards. Board of Squim Wolves. They sent a man in motion in the near side is Aragon. Now they're going to hand off again in the backfield. This time it's Ethan Melnick tries to go up the middle. Maybe picks up two or three yards as Melnick. And you always like to see a guy on the bottom of the pile make the stop. And that time was Maurice Allen to make the stop for the Bremerton Knights. So Hampton is back, but right now he's not on the sidelines. Maybe for discipline reasons for the coach, you know, for doing that. But I've been told by the, the our boys in the north that he's in. Fair enough. The yeah, South Kitsap lost. That's they've you know they've won more games this year. They have like the last five or six. So it's a successful season so far for their for the South Kitsap Wolves. Here the Squim Wolves with the football for the for taking the hand, keeping the hand off again. It's Maneke, and he is smacked at the line of scrimmage. Maybe gets a yard on the uh, for the momentum, but he yeah, he picks up a first down at the 45. Picks a pick, pick up a two on the play by Zeke Smanicky, the five eleven the junior quarterback. So Zeke, ever, ever since those two long runs, they've kind of contained him. He had he ever had a run yet more than five yards. And so Smanicky, again as we were told, and true to form, getting the, the abundance of the carries offensively. But he does have some weapons out there, and then one of them is. Uh, Hampton, but he's not in the football game as uh, as of now. They do have uh, a man in the backfield. I believe it's Liam Wicker in the backfield. Now they'll send him in motion, and Smanicky is going to be met in the backfield. Tried to twist and turn away from the defender, but couldn't go anywhere. First man to get there for the Bremerton Knights to get the stop was Rilo Ritomi, the six foot junior. 
He's not just a six foot junior, he's six foot 240 pounder, no wonder Smatiki at 175 pounds ran into a brick wall and he made the stop to the right over Tommy. Remember last year, Kimo Ratomi was a big part of the offense for the Bremerton Knights. Ryland Ratomi, a big part of the Knights' defense. Uh, second down. <laughs> Rain fart. Second down and 10 for the Squim Wolves. Going from our left to our right. Center man of motion to the near side. They're going to hand off to him. He's trying to dance outside and paint a number. He has Henry gone and he is trapped in the backfield. There to make the stop for the Bremerton Knights again, Maurice Allen. He's 6'1", 225 pound junior there to make the stop. As he tried to get outside the painted numbers, the Knights were there to make the stop. That pass, sideline to sideline defense by the Bremerton Knights that time. That was great pursuit by Marquise Allen. My God, what great speed. And so it brings up third down now and 11 for the Wolves on their own 44 yard line near hash mark. Going for left to our right, Knights in a 3-4 defensive stand. Man coverage on the far side. Smanik will roll out to the far side. He's going to try to race out to the far side. Being tracked down to the far side. And he would cross to the 45 to the 47. Is Smanik, he is dropped there. Nice good defense on the play. And brings that fourth down again. Chasing him down from behind was Maurice Allen, the 6'1", 225-pound junior. He comes to the near side of the field as Allen tracked Smanik down from behind. After he only picks up three yards and was able to make the stop at 225 pass. Well, you're getting that motor running. Oh, you got that motor going. It's good to see that Bremerton's defense still stepping up to keeping this game close. Spim's going to have to punt. Enoch Tater back. And that punt's going to go out of bounds on the 33 yard line. No return that time for Enoch Taylor. Nice to get the football back with 446. To go here in the fourth quarter, the third quarter of play. So I see Hampton coming in now as a corner, uh, 18 white. So whatever happened, he got. I'm, I would be curious about my, how, how he got back in. I really am curious now. We might have time uh, after the game if Squim Wolves to ask him. Nice with the football now on their own 40 yard line. Here in the third quarter, 4.46 to go. Turning at 7-6. to six. We have the game of the of the, uh, of the night here at Bremerton Memorial Stadium. I thought it would be a dandy. So there we go. There's a snap half right side to Jara. And that time again, the in at quarterback for the Bremerton Knights again is Anthony Medina. And Jara using him running the football. Gets outside and picks up about two or three yards on the play. Second down and eight. We'll call it for the Bremerton Knights. And Knights, you don't see a whole lot of huddles here tonight, do you, Doe? Yeah, huh? I don't see that much. If you're keeping the ball on the ground, who's going to be the toughest, who's going to last the longest? It's only a one-point game. So Medina, Henry Center, we, what do we have here? We have uh, officials time out. you got to send somebody out. This is going. This is an, equi it's an equipment, equipment issue. On forum, and it's going to be uh, 58 coming in for him. It's Paul Burroughs, the 6'2, 265 uh, pound senior coming in. <laughs> All right, Knights on the shotgun, second down and seven. Man, you still here in this drive, turning at seven to six, a hand off. Trying to pick his way through traffic again as Najara. Men at the line of scrimmage, and maybe picks up a yard on the play. Be third down now, and we'll call it six for the Bremerton Knights. Yep. Um, I'm trying to find out. Well, well, third down and six. Three thirty-five here to go. We're in the third. Knights with the football, trailing at seven to six. Again, the quarterback Medina. A little taller than Najara. They're going to turn the hand off to Najara. Cuts up left tackle up the middle. And boy, he speeds up that middle of the field. Explodes across the 48-yard line down to the 45. Nice pickup on the play. 11-yard pickup on the play by Kenneth Najara. Get to Knights, the first down. I cannot tell you. 5'7", 145 pounds. Runs like a bull, but he's coming out now. Kind of tweaked his ankle a little bit, but he's still walking. Wow. That was a good run. Think about closing that door. Uh, 
Yeah. The first and ten for the uh, Knights at the Wolves 45 yard line. Well, it's warm outside. It's, it could be. It was a little warmer here earlier with the door. Somebody opened the door and left it open. There's a little run up the middle again by the Bermonton Knights. A couple of yard pickup on the play again. This time the ball carrier, thanks, Joe. It was Marquise Allen. The ball carried that time for the Bermonton Knights. After on that first down run, picks up a pair of yards. We'll call it second down and eight. Forward to Bremerton tonight so with 2.29 now and taking here in the third quarter play. We're going to miss touchdown, safety, what? <laughs> uh, well, they're coming down. Um, that extra point still coming, but bugs me. Here we go. 7-6. There's a handoff right side. Trying to cut about in the far hash mark. Spinning away from traffic is Dylan McKay. He went right, took a hard left as he cut up at the hash mark. Gets very close to a nice first down. I do believe he did. It's a first down. It's a first down. So he picks up 11 yards on the play. Gives the Knights the first down. Now methodically moving the football down the field. And they move the chains out to the 35 of the, of the Squim Wolves. After the Squim Wolves punt. Let's get the football back. And now marching on this drive. This drive started 446. Now it's 143 to go here in the third. Medina the quarterback. Return and hand off again. Right up to Marquise Allen, straight up the middle. The Knights are seeing something on this defensive line for Squim. And they're, they're just attacking him right up the middle, Joe. Right up the middle, and they're clocking up, and I see someone's on the first, someone's down. Oh, it's number four from Bermonton. That's yes, Marquise Allen, even writhing in pain on the on the. And oh goodness gracious, he is in some kind of pain on the on the field down there, holding his left arm, I do believe, and uh, and and you know, it's in that kind of pain. It. It cannot be good as Coach T is going to run on the field for the Bremerton Knights to, to investigate and see what the problem is. And hopefully it's just a temporary thing. But they're going to send out the boy. You know, I'm looking over and I was looking for the. And I, normally we have uh, the paramedics here in the end zone. And, the, you know, they showed up earlier. I was uh, here earlier. And maybe, they, maybe they were here and they didn't get the word that the game was actually postponed. So. He needs to go well. well he's on his left arm, like you said. Well, he's able to get off of his own power, and that's even better news yep, yep, yep. for the for the Bremerton Knights. I'm trying to see where he's holding his arm. Probably someone landing on him. Put, put, put yep. nerve. You know, yeah, landing right on his bicep, it looked like. And, uh, yep, yep, yep. But, you know, getting off of your own power, yep, that's called, the... In football terms, it's called a stinger. That's him, yes. A <laughs> stinger. And, uh, that's old guys, it's called disability. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one thirteen and ticking here in the third. Seven six swim till on top. Knights with the football marching down the field. Here they'll take a hand off right side and trying to get outside is Addison, and he slips and is tackled in the backfield. And there to make the stop for the swim wolves was Aaron Goldback, the five seven hundred and fifty five pound sophomore, penetrated the. The offensive line and was able to make the stop for a small loss on the play. Brings up third down and eight for the Bremerton tonight on the 32-yard line of the Squim Wolves. How many times you get close to the goal line? We've got to capitalize this. So many chances, right? It's like the Knights' uh, third trip down. and yeah. And uh, they get uh, deep and then the Martin and then they actually had to punt their last time one to get down there right after they kept Squim from getting out that was started the, the half another uh, run by Berman tonight and that's going to be the last play of the, of the third quarter no score here in the third quarter by either, either team brings up to the fourth it's a, it's a nail biter I tell you it's the Berman tonight's trailing the Squim Wolves 7-6 to six. we back in 60 seconds you're listening to Friday Night Lights High School Football on Mega Talk Radio, AM 1400 KITZ and ISPNSports.com. Oh boy. He comes down the wire. You, uh, we got the best game. And portion of the broadcast here in Mega Talk Radio, AM 1400 KITZ. And ISPSports.com is presented by Bremerton 76. 
Brought to you by, in part by, Cooper Auto Repair, GermantonBasketball.com, Almost Candid Photography, Manette Day Spa, Tidy Mustard Sign Shop, Chiropractive Lifestyle Center, PC Parts of Service, HK Insurance, Fraternal Order Vehicles 192, and Takira Los Cazadores in Bremerton. Help bringing this football game into fruition here on a Friday night. A little late start, 8 o'clock. Stadium for the fourth and final quarter play. We got a good one. Balls hanging on seven to six, but a huge play right here in this ball game. Fourth and seven for the Knights. This is a big Bulls. play. Huge. There we go. Fourth quarter. Knights had the football big, big right on the squim 41. Thirty-one. Right Thirty-one. Excuse me. And they need about seven to pick up the first down. Here's the John ring out on. He's going to go deep. And wide open in the end zone was Guerrero just overthrew him by a tad. That, that was a great call. That was a great call. Great call. Great pattern. Very good. Only fortunately the pass was a little bit too long. <laughs> he was open. Second time in three possessions for the Bremerton tonight. They've turned the football over on downs. The third time tonight, the Bremerton Knights have turned the football over on downs. On the 30-yard line, yes. They could have, they controlled, they controlled Zeke. Um, Call an opportunity. As I mentioned earlier in this quarter, Knights had the football on the scrim 32 and could not do anything with it. Here's a handoff to Wicker. And he crosses the 32, gets up to the 30. Full three yard line and stop there. Wicker, the ball carrier, Liam Wicker. They have him listed as a 205, but he certainly looks like a lot bigger than that. Knights uh, made the stop, minimal gain on the play. Two yard pickup on the play by Wicker, second down and eight for the, the Squim Wolves. Your hash mark for Squim. Manneke's going to take it right side, try to get outside of Peter Numbers. Nice block on the edge. Nice block on the edge by Aragon. Around the far sideline he goes across the 50. Finally pushed out of bounds in Bremerton tonight's territory at the 47-yard line. And it was a nice block on the edge by Adrian Aragon. That sealed the edge for Smanicky for him to get outside the, the painted numbers and race down the far sideline and before finally being ushered out of bounds by the Bremerton Knights defense. For so long you can contain, you contain, and then boom, you break it. It's been a while since the Wolves have been in Bremerton territory. Swim with their own blitz. On their side is Maddox. He is, he is slammed down to the ground at the 45. He's going to feel that one. And did you see who made that stop there? Who made that stop? So as uh, Maddox remains down, and Maurice Allen, who's been all over the place for the Bermondsey Knights tonight, in on that stop, and he grabbed hold of Maddox and he threw him down on that. That surface here at uh, Rivers Memorial Stadium, he's not getting up yet. Scratch that, that was number 52. 52, okay, so uh, we'll give credit to uh, Rilo Matomi, who's also been all over the uh, the landscape here at Rivers Memorial Stadium. Is, uh, both teams will take a knee as customary, but he's slowly getting himself to his feet. So the coach was, head coach was squirming, saying, he said, he got a horse collar, it was a horse collar tackle. And uh, the field judge, Allen, Mike Kenson said, no, he got him by the jersey. He bear hugged him and just slammed him down to the ground. And uh, we'll find out here in a second. <laughs> I think it's number 19. Yeah, Miller. Thank you. Let's see the 19th. The number 19. Oh, here we go, number 19. Caden Miller. This is a backup quarterback. He's a, he's a freshman. Ooh, freshman. In a big spot now for the Squim Wolves. He's in a big spot. He'll call for the football. He's going to hand off to Wicker. He's going to dance outside. He gets to use his blockers in front of him. Crosses the 40 to the Bremerton Knights 38-yard line is Liam Wicker. Picks up nine yards on the plate as Wicker on that carry. And uh, he, uh, boy, he just used his blockers out in front of him. Picked his way to the defensive Line for the Bremerton Knights and finally gets very close to a first down. Picks up nine yards on the play. 
Third down and short for the Squim Wolves. Very solid, conservative play. Well, third and one, I see Zeke back there just walking <coughs> off. And, and also, this probably guy's been knocked up. Been knocked up. <laughs> yeah, he did. Here's Wicker again. This uh, near hash mark, just bulldogging his way up. Bonnie, the nice defense, can't get him down to the surface to blow the whistles and stop the play. But he picked up a first down, picked up three yards on the plate as Liam Wicker methodically moving the clock and and also uh, and most importantly for the Squim Wolves, we're holding on. It was seven. The sixth lead, Joe, is they're, they're, look at all that clock. They're ticking off the clock as, uh, as Zeke Smanicky will come back in after he gets a breather. Looks uh, no worse for the wear. And that's a true leader right there. Zeke Smanicky takes a licking and keeps on ticking. This is Zeke Smanicky for the Squim Walls. Wicker and Smanicky having uh, great games here tonight. Wicker to deep back. Smanicky calls for the football. He's going to keep it himself. Goes up the near hash mark, spins away again. Tossed down at the 30 by the Bremer tonight. And, and uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, he's taking a beating out there tonight. But, you know, it all, like my grandfather used to say, Joe, and it feels good when it quits hurting. And uh, also a win will make those type of things feel a lot better as well. And and for the Squim Wolves, looking to go 2-0. and I can't remember the last time the Squim was 2-0, and but... They're uh, off to a good start here in 2024-25, that's for sure. And near hash mark. Second down and along five for the Squim Wolves. Zeke Smanicky with Wicker in the backfield. And finally, they, somebody's going to call a timeout. Squim's going to call a timeout. 30-second timeout. We'll take one, too. You're listening to Friday Night Lights High School Football on Mega Talk Radio, AM 1400, KITZ, and ISBNSports.com back in 30 seconds. Here on your Friday Night Lights High School Football Broadcasting Networks. I also like to thank uh, here on the, the the broadcast, DJ Joe Frank for coming up and second straight year helping us in the broadcast. Appreciate you, Joe. Oh, thank you for having me. This, this is fun, K-Mac. High school football on a Friday night with no rain. No rain. <laughs> Boy, it sure looked like earlier today we were going to have some rain. Hopefully we can continue. I am going to be kind of busy this, for the rest, basically off every Friday night for the rest of the month. I'm blessed. Thanks, thank you, clients. Hey, I saw that itinerary get uh, lined up there. I thought my, I thought I was busy. <laughs> and it looks like uh, also coming up, we're seeing you also. And I'm back to broadcasting uh, uh, fall league basketball down at the Park and Rec gym. That's, that's coming up next for me. All right, to squim with the football, third, second down in five, and then to roll out to the far side is Smanicky. He's going to look. He's going to pick like he's going to throw. Cuts up in the painted numbers and gang tackled there. Tyson Penitucci there to help make the stop for the Bremerton Knights after a modest game of a couple yards. Brings up third down. So they got to stop here pretty soon because time is going to be, a, we're going to go under eight minutes now, and if they go four and out, Bremerton had the ball at their own 20 yard line. So they got to make a move. Right now, four minute drive here for the Squim Wolves. They get the football to start the, the fourth quarter. They got the ball in the fourth quarter. Here's a low snap, picked up off the hardwood, and they're going to hand off to our Malachi Hampton, who was exited out of this football game, we thought. They're uh, to make the stop for the Bremerton Knights, Isaiah Addison. And uh, actually, it was, appears to be uh, William Lopez Blow make the stop. I'm really curious how he's back in there because uh, Rob Whitehead specifically pointed him out. He used his thumb he out of the game, but yet he came back in. So I'm really curious when I talk to him later about that. Don't bring up uh, fourth down Big. and four. Part of the biggest fourth down that yep. we've had here tonight. This, this is it. I really think this is it right here. And the Knights need a stop against Zeke Zadisky, and he's going to take it himself and going to rip the middle. He's stuffed up last year, spins away from, from the defender. He's going to get the first down. He went right into the teeth of the defense. No one was able to get a hand on him. He spun out of there. 
And well, it was a race up the middle of the field to pick up a big, 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 big first down for Squibb. That's the biggest first down of the game right there. They had him contained, and he's spinning around, and up the middle he goes for the, the additional 10 yards. Well, you know, the, the, what the defensive line did there, though, they, they, they stopped up the, the, deep, the offensive line from the push. But they, that's, but they still had a wall of defenders in front of them. So a smart play by Smatiki just was able to spit out of that and get outside and, and do the rest on his own. So he's going to wrap up, wrap up. There we go, 624 to go. For a fresh set of downs at the 20-yard line for the Squim Wolves. And hand off the wicker. Ducks underneath the first wave of defenders who is he keep tugging and tugging and tugging and pulling is Braden Grimm. And before he finally will get him down to the hard service here at... Bremerton Memorial Stadium for Ahmad Eskain on the play. So I see Zeke is going to the sideline asking what he wants. And I think what they're doing now is just playing the play clock. But the play clock is 25 seconds. So we're going, it's now what? Under six minutes? Okay. Under six minutes. Not that big of a hurry. They're going to nip, they're going to, they're going to tussle with that one point lead. And the Bremerton Knights are going to have to fight and claw and see if they can't punch that football out of there. Spanicky puts a man in motion in their side. Now get his Hampton. He's going to pitch to Wicker. He's going to get outside. Gets out to the 15, down to the 13, before being banged out of bounds there. Dylan McKay there for the Bremerton Knights to help hit him out of bounds after a nice pickup on the play. Yeah, and stops the clock, fortunately. It's third down. Once again, we're right back at it. Third and nine, five minutes. It's a two down territory. Now I see the clock is rolling because I specifically saw the official stop the clock. And th- I don't know why it's rolling. And look at Rob, why had Rob is looking at the clock, so we're, we're going. Guess they tackled him in bounds. Just a third down, and uh, we'll call it a long five again for the Squim Wolves. Big third down for Smatiki. Again, Liam Wicker in the backfield to send Hampton in motion. Going to hand off to Hampton. Going to try to get outside. And there's the make the stop. But the river tonight, Ryder Sorensen, will to grab on to Wicker and get him down to the surface on a nice tackle. Wicker gets up and bang. He has a nice tackle. So I think they're going to kick a field goal. I don't know. And they are going to kick a field goal. They are. So this is a big field goal coming up for the Squim Wolves. Which I think is fine. That's okay because we don't have a field goal kicker, so we're going to score well, a touchdown. Not, it doesn't really matter. That's not the point with me. Yeah, it's a, a big, we got to save that clock. we got to save that clock. And force Bremerton to have to score a touchdown to boot to win this thing. So ball spotted at the 19, so it's going to be a 36-yarder. And the Knights, nope, Squim's going to call a timeout. Squim's going to call a timeout and uh, see if they can't. Well, it just gives the Knights an, an excellent opportunity as well to figure out what they want to do defensively, see what they saw uh, they can do to maybe get in the backfield and block this kick. Because they can block this kick, they can pick it up and run it back for a touchdown. How exciting that would be for the Bremerton Knights nice faithful. You're so wishful, thank you, man. <laughs> but it's happened before, more in, more in high school football than any other. Can you get four yards on fourth down to put the table? Put the Knights clinging, clinging to uh, staying in his football game. Well, portion of this broadcast is brought to you by the Fraternal Order of Eagles. They're an international nonprofit organization uniting fraternally in the spirit of liberty, truth, justice, and equality to make human life more desirable by promoting prosperity, gladness, and hope. And uh, that's right, they give away all great uh, cancer foundations and they give back to the community uh, all over the place. So, Fraternal Order of Eagles 192, 40 bucks to join. Here's what happened they changed their mind and they're going to not kick a field goal, which makes total sense. That's a great move by them. Fourth and five, Smanicky rolls to the near side. He's in a dump and pass caught by Wicker. Lowers his head, gets through the goal line. Down at the five yard line. Shy of a first down. That's the clock, did not clock, the clock, and that's it. He didn't get it. He didn't get it. Down at the five, is they spotted him at the six yard line. He's got the first down. Did he? No. Very close to it, yeah. Right, is that, that the six-yard line they're marching off down there? 
I'm looking over at the yard marker across here to get to the eight. But it depends on where he went out of bounds. And now they're moving, now that she's a referee moving on the near sideline, he's going to move up. We got, we got holding against squim. And then, wow. and that should be big, 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 isn't it? Yep. And then it looks like they had the first down, and now yep. they don't have to march the football back. Maybe holding was able to uh, allow Wicker to spring out to the near side of the si yeah, sideline. So squim is giving Bremerton a chance. They're giving them a chance. They can hold him here. Fourth and 14. Nice trill just by a point, seven to six. Need a big defensive stop. And uh, Rob. Uh, Once again, we're talking about the clock, which I discussed too about it. Here we go. The clock should be four, no, 351. 351. What a costly, costly. Yeah, 351. 351. Almost got it. There we go. Up on the scoreboard. 7-6. Also reads on the scoreboard. Squimmel's on top, and he and the clock has stopped. Started with 3:48 to go, and the Knights jump off sides. Oh my gosh! This is critical. That helps out. That's big The clock is still rolling. Look at that. Fourth and 14. It's gonna be fourth and nine. And the clock is still going. Yes, it should be stopped in the penalty. The clock is still The clock is. I think they just caught it. Yep. Now they'll wave it again. And Rob will walk over, and you'll. And go ahead, you know, go ahead. Stop the clock, fellas. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. For you. You'll get the clock right the first time. Dead ball. Here's your offsides defense. And now we'll go to clock. Clock. He'll point. And then they look up, they go, they put it back on it. Yeah. Boy, you know, doing a, being a clock operator is almost as bad as being the official scorekeeper for basketball. For basketball? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my first be. That's like my, uh, I'll, I'll get it after this plus. As it was the clock, as Rob Shocker winds the arm, the clock will now start. But a big fourth down coming up in 9 for the Squim Wolves. Spanicky. She's a blitz coming up in the nice down. They'll back off as the Bulls in Smatic. He looks like they're going to change the play. In in the backfield is Liam Wicker, the big running back. Has 225 pounds of load. He's going to roll out near far side. He's going to look. He's going to throw in the back. And he ends on his picked off by Bremerton at the wood yard line. Enoch Taylor picks it off. All right, here's the deal. Taylor with a great interception with his fourth down. He should have knocked it down. He got the ball at their own, at the 17 yard line, but because he intercepted, this is the one. And I understand it. I get it. The ball's right in front of you, but right now, should have knocked it down. Yep, should have knocked it down. That hurts. In the moment type of yes, thing. Yes, yes, yes. But the Knights do what they what they needed to do, though they did get the stop on Squim. Now with 3.20 to go off the interception. Yards. Intercepted by Taylor. Bremerton has the football on their own two yard line. 3.20 on the clock. Here's going to hand off. And up the middle is the running back. Staying on his feet is Marquise Allen. And gets good yardage on the play. Eight yard pickup on the play by Marquise Allen. It's a breathing room for the Bremerton Knights. This is going to be tough. If they get to midfield with about a minute left, they have a chance. And uh, they had some long balls uh, thrown down in the first half that uh, were very uh, catchable, if you will. And right here, the uh, Knights will be uh, taking a timeout and talking things this over again. Uh, as Grim again had another opportunity down deep in Bremerton Knights territory. We have a, we have a, it looks like we have a man down for Squim on the goal line down there. And looks like a number... 15, 16, 66. That's uh, Warren Nichols, the 5'7", 180 pound junior is down on the, uh, he's gonna get a, he's gonna get some help up, he's gonna get off on his own power, I do believe, he's gonna lip off the field. So when I was free safety in my old days, 1900, I used to yell, fourth down, knock it down, knock it down. I say that all the time. Fourth down, knock it down, don't intercept, knock it down, knock it down. Okay, we get it, Joe. <laughs> knock it down. It's okay. Well, it's not okay, Taylor. Come on. <laughs> so Enoch Taylor comes up with a big interception. Uh, it would have been a turnover on downs anyways. But if, like I said, Joe, knock it down. Knock it down. Good rumor tonight. It's first down and 10. 
First down and 10 on their own uh, to 13, 14 yard line. Shotgun for the Knights. Gonna fling on a slant, caught. And by Ethan Guerrero, he was hit immediately, if not sooner, by Simon Scribner, the 5'11", 165 pound senior. He came in and blasted him, but he holds on to the football as Ethan Guerrero. 2.40 to go here in the fourth, 7 6 squam. Nice. Gonna have to hurry up their offense now with approaching the two minute mark here of the, the fourth quarter of play. Medina calls for the football. And the football is on the surface again off the botch snap. And a big loss by the Bremer tonight again. And Medina was able to jump on the football for the Knights. Again, that ball was just bouncing around back there. And the Knights now are going to be. Uh, We'll call a timeout, and it's going to be a big Bermont third down timeout. for the Bremerton Knights. Uh, in 10, 12, 13 yard line. Third down, and 10, 10. yep. Well, once again, the game summary of this is uh, we controlled Zeke for a little bit. We had three opportunities inside the 30 for Bremerton. Came out with nothing. We're losing by an extra point. It would have been 7-7. Seven, seven. So these are things that come and go. And unfortunately for Bremerton, so far, they, they, they their defense has did just like oh, they did against Kelsey. Oh, defense. But their offense just has not. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Defense. Here we go. Spot. So the, the Knights, this is bring up a big third down because it's third down and 11. And, and you're going to. And you, and you, and you, well, you would think so. But there is 2.20 to go in the football game. Yeah, no timeouts. And, uh, but yeah, I. I, I Slapping his hands. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a tough one. No time more time out left. Here's a hand up near side again, and then Smanicki will get there, bringing down the ball carrier, Isaiah Addison, bringing up fourth down. My book tells me they have one time out left, Bremerton. Boy, and you, you got to go for this. This is yep. the ball game right here. Fourth down, and, it, you know, that, that play there was trying to set up a, a more manageable fourth down, I do believe, by Coach T. Now they got to pick it up. I think it's called their final timeout. And so they're going to talk about this as Squim will go to their far sidelines to talk things over. Bremerton will talk things over right below us here at Hipper High above here. In the, you know, one thing, I, I, they used to be like in Silverdale, at Silverdale Stadium, well, now Integrity Stadium, at certain this point of time of year, you get flies everywhere. And I, I just thought about that. There's no flies flying around here. You know we should, you know we should run this play? We should run the Bumbarooski. Get the ball, just go right down the middle. I would try. I would try that, that reverse they were going to do earlier. That was, the game. that was a touchdown. That was a touchdown. And then I would have an option off that play just in case they sniff it out have a receiver down the field where they can throw it to him. And uh, so, right? Yeah. Former officer coordinator myself, you know. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> See if they come up with my wacky idea. Medina, the quarterback, he's going to go back to pass. He's going to roll near side. Underneath pressure. Swings the near side. Underneath, but he breaks away from traffic. The ball comes loose at the 21 after making the catch with Marquis Salmon fighting for extra yardage. The ball pops loose. It's still shy of a first down, and the Squim Wolves going to come up on offense as they hold the Bremerton Knights. Or Squim. What did I say? That's okay. What did I say? What did I call them? You could have quings in that. The Squim Wolves will get the football and and be able to salt this one away with 139 to go. So, that extra point. Boy, that extra point comes back to Hancha. <laughs> it sure does. And that's when the Knights scored with 11-19 to go in the second quarter and missed the, the well, block, it was blocked. So, yep. wasn't quite all his fault. We got a low, but but, uh, but I, used to, I, I get it. The, the, the block field goal was the difference in this game. So special teams by the Squim Wolves came up big in this football game. Yeah, and, and they had, once again, Bremen had opportunities to take a lead in this ball game. Over and over and over again. There's Wicker again. He just takes the handoff and both hands on the football and uh, covers it up. Bremerton did call timeout. Yeah, Bremerton will call timeout and savage what little hope they have left in this one. And if everything holds the way it is, it's been well, uh, Joe, we're going to improve to 2-0 and 
in Olympic League two-way play, and the Bremerton Knights are going to so obviously, uh, so fall to 0-2. So who are we going to talk to? Zeke? Well, I think we'd like to get to Liam Wicker, number 82, 82? and Zeke Smanicky. I think they were... Uh, 14? Yeah. They came, up, they came up big today for them. Okay. Both running the football, and then... And, um, I know where Hampton caught the football, but every time you pick somebody, not defense lost. tonight. Uh, right here. <laughs> right. Oh, defense good. Not a done two. Yeah. Well, it, it, they changed the numbers. See right here. They changed the numbers. Oh, is okay. Twelve is eighty-two, and and. Uh, What's eighty-two's first name? Liam Wicker. His um, I think his dad was a coach at one point in time, and I know he. I I, I know he's got a brother. Or, I'm covering all these guys. I've I recognized the name. Okay. I think his dad was Eric Wicker. I think was a coach. I believe. I think basketball. No wonder they opened the door. <laughs> right. It's been that chip on over. Okay. Pretty bad, huh? Matic with the football, gonna keep it himself. Met in the backfield and. He'll be driven back by the Bermondson Knights defense. And with 125 and ticking, I don't think the Knights uh, can stop this clock again. And uh, boy, they lost a tough one here tonight, Joe. Wow. Barring, barring something. It was, it was not so much the extra point. I mean, they, they had some opportunities to win. You know, defense played great. Defense played great again. They did. So uh, just little things you got to fine tune on, on the offense to get better this week. Yeah, Bremerton, nice defense. Uh, uh, Giving up 29 points a game, but but uh, it was just one big loss. It was the two up though that skewed that number. And but have only poured, scored 6.8 points a game, so they're 0.8 below their average scoring. The Bremerton Knights, mm -hmm. but they did get on the scoreboard tonight. And we have a penalty. Dead purpose. Yeah, play a game called against the, uh, the Swim Wolves and. And then the next play, they'll be able to probably just salt out this last 43 seconds on the clock. And we want to thank, of course, Dennis back at the KITZ AM 1400 Mega Talk Radio Studios for push, pushing the buttons and the boards and everything he does back there to help uh, get this broadcast uh, on the airwaves. And we'd like to thank all of our sponsors as well. So let's do this piece of math here. 46 seconds. Turn down. Here's uh, Hampton going in motion. The, the handoff to Wicker. Breaks a tackle in the backfield. Runs up on the far hash bar. Pushing that rugby style scrum. And he uh, keeps going. And it's funny. He stopped at the 25 yard line with 30 seconds left. And I know what Rob's doing. I know what Rob is doing. And yeah, that's gonna that clock's gonna run out, I do believe. That's what Rob just did. 16, 15, 14. The Squim Wolves are going with a big win here tonight. 14 uh, 7 to 6 is your score. 14 yard touchdown run. Uh, pass to uh, Hampton in the end zone. That was a scoring for Squim. Extra point good. Knights an eight-yard touchdown run by by uh, Tyson Penatusi. He gets into the end zone, 11 19 to go in the second quarter. The extra point was blocked. And that's your final score, 7 to 6. Okay, George, we get, real quick, we get the final. We get the final. Numbers by George Edgar. There's not a whole lot of them. And Swimwell comes out on 7 to 6. It's over to Bermerson Nice tonight. Pretty much a swim. They go, they go, they go to four and one on the year, two and zero oh in league, and it's basically been the Zeke Schmadeke show tonight. It was, he ran for 86 yards on 21 carries, and he was three for seven passing for 20 yards. Adam, Adam Wicker had 45 yards rushing on 13 carries, and uh, Schmadeke's passes went. He completed three of them. One. Four. Yes. Yeah. One, leading, one pass, 13 yards to Malachi Hampton, and one 
when they catch the Ethan Millen for eight yard, the other two, the other one was went backwards for a yard. Okay, and it's for Bremerton. I'm still trying to total them up here. It was very much. 25, 25 yards on uh, seven carries for Travis Pinatusi. Uh, excuse me, uh, not 29, 38, 40, 40, 50 yards on eight, eight carries by Marquise Allen. And, uh, 35 yards. Uh, Eight carries by Isaiah Addison. Kinazawa was uh, four, 15, 20, 27, 28, 40 yards on 12 carries. He was also one of three passing for 15 yards. And Anthony Bedina, three of three for 19 yards passing. Penatusi was caught one for 15. Addison caught one pass for eight. Guerrero, one for five, and Dylan McKay, one pass for six. That's all, all right. Good. Thanks, George, for the uh, post-game stats as the Squim Wolves beat the Bremerton Knights tonight, seven to six, here in a uh, defensive contest here tonight. Once again, uh, in the first uh, quarter play, a 14-yard touchdown pass to Malachi Hampton in the end zone, made it seven to nothing. Squim Wolves, the Bremerton Knights responded with an eight-yard touchdown by Penatusi. Is 11-19 to go in the second quarter. Extra point was blocked. 7-6 your score, and that's where we end up tonight. Final score here, again, from Bremerton Memorial Stadium. The East Grim will 7 to Bremerton Knights 6. Thanks for tuning in to the special presentation of Friday Night Lights High School Football on Mega Talk Radio AM 1400 KITZ and ISBNSports.com. KMAC for DJ Joe Frank reminding you the road to success is always under construction. We'll see you next week for Friday Night Lights High School Football. Dennis, back to you.